Welcome to another edition of k and Conversations. Got a ton of really great questions for you today, or uh, answers, obviously. You've got the great questions, I've got the answers. Um, hope you enjoy them, and uh, let's get started. By the way, if you like this video, hit the subscribe button now and give it a thumbs up. There's a lot more um, great videos that I'll send you information on if you subscribe, because then you'll be alerted when the videos come up. Uh, first one is um, from MSM. Is it okay to use a choke chain on a four-month-old Weimar and I'm teaching him to walk in a loose leash using a lot of positive reinforcements you teach in your videos? It's working good. The problem is he loves eating rock sticks and corrections with a flat collar don't work. So, um, and I even think that it's more dangerous to his neck. You're right, flat collars can be dangerous to the dog's neck, but a four month old wine runner, I, would, I don't really like choke chains on dogs. I'll, I'd use a martingale. If you're using a flat collar, switch over to a martingale. Choke chains are a little too much on younger dogs, and you're saying you wanna um, kind of get a handle on him before he weighs 40 kilos, which is a good idea, because a wine is a really strong dog, but they're good dogs, they can be taught um, you just need to kind of hunker down and do the uh, work that you need to do. So um, as opposed, people are always trying to say, well, when the dog gets something in his mouth, I can have a hard time getting it out. First of all, if the dog gets something in his mouth, I generally pick the dog up and disable the dog so that the dog's not running around trying to get away. Because what I really worry about is the dog swallowing what's in his mouth more than having it in his mouth. So um, teach the dog preemptively a, a yuck or a fooey command. There's a video on my site on that. Um, that's super important. It's one of the most important things you're going to teach your puppy. So get started on that. That will help you. Keep the dog on a martingale for a while. You can put him on a choke chain at about six months or so. You know, I mean, it depends on the, really the size of the dog and the constitution and the conformation of the dog. Is he strong enough to handle it? Some are, some aren't. Um, nothing to rush into, but a martingale would really serve you well. That's what I would do. Next question. Uh, Charlie D. Geronimo how would you suggest for somebody to get started in the dog training business? I wanted to try and get into it since high school and never knew where to begin. Um, okay, well, that's a, that's a great question, but I, I can't advise you on that because I never wanted to be a dog trainer. This is something I fell into completely on accident. I was, um, you know, just, I was, I mean, I taught karate for years. And then um, from my photography business, I kind of started taking pictures of dogs and had this connection with dogs, I guess. And um, my vet started sending me clients and clients started referring me clients. So <coughs> I'm, I'm, I'm the wrong person to, to, to talk to about that. What you might want to do is get hooked up with an organization like the International Association of Canine Professionals. Um, see if they have some kind of mentor program, stuff like that. Um, but, but if it's your passion, if it's something you really love, maybe volunteer at a shelter, start working with dogs, learn a little bit about dogs, because I think anybody who works in shelters is going to have a much, much, much better um, a variety of dogs to, to understand and to learn from than somebody who just goes and trains somebody's little uh, poodle to uh, sit. So that's my suggestion to you. Um, uh, Amazing Grace, um, how sweet the sound. I'm just kidding, it's Amazing Grace. Um, but, but Robert, we know we've got a problem here already. Pee pads are critical for us because we can't always put our two indoor dogs outside for all kinds of reasons. One reason, weather. Um, so I'm gonna stop there, okay? Because you said, you know, you can't put them out in freezing weather and all, all this stuff. Um, pee pee pads, the reason I hate them is because they're teaching the dog to pee inside. The thing we don't want a dog to do is to pee inside or poo inside. We, it, it doesn't matter if it's on a certain area. Um, it's, it's not a solid habit for the dog. I hate pee pads because they teach the dog that and most dogs that are trained on pee pads will eventually always pee in the house. And then you've got these crazy dog owners who have pee pee pads all over the house and all the dogs are pissing all over the house. And it's a disaster. It's, 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 a, it's a dirty habit. Dogs don't like it. Dogs are very clean animals. They don't pee in their den. And your house is the den. So don't use pee pee pads, please. If the weather's, and you say throw them out in horrid weather, you make it sound like, it's, it's like you're gonna lock them outside in 40 degree below zero. I don't even know where you live but you're really over um, emotionalizing this whole issue. Um, what I do with my puppies is when I get a puppy, and I always hope I get a puppy near winter time because I get them out in the rain, in the cold, in the snow, in whatever weather I can get them out. And I'm in Southern California now, so I don't have snow. But if I'm in snow, I get them out in the snow because you form these behaviors early on. You're doing the best possible thing for your dog to teach them to go outside, to be outside. It's not going to kill them. Don't lock them outside. Obviously, anybody who does that's an idiot. But yeah, I mean, it's not going to kill the dog to go outside to pee and poo. It's a solid habit. It teaches them really good behaviors. And, and stop with this over emotionalizing stuff so um, 
Mallory Haupt says, I love your videos. You really have a way with dogs. Thank you. Um, I have a 12 month old rescue. She's a collie mix who I just got a month ago. She's smart, but also very high energy and was never taught not to jump as a puppy. How can I teach her not to jump now? Super easy, Mallory. What you need to do is you need to put a leash on her and whenever she goes to jump, you need to correct her. So you need to tell her no, you know, and what I would probably do before I do any of this stuff is I would teach her a solid sit command, have somebody walk up, shake their hand. If he goes to jump, you tell her no, I said sit put her back in a sit, the person walks away. Teach the person to come up and back several times. The dog should have a preemptive command, and that command should be sit or down, and if the dog breaks that command, then you correct them for not doing that. Don't correct them for jumping, because that's an engagement thing. Teach people, hey, I'm training this dog for the next few months, don't look at the dog, don't talk to the dog, don't touch the dog until the dog is calm. If the dog jumps, disconnect from the dog. I mean, it's real simple, simple, simple stuff. Um, at 12 months old, it's not that hard to teach, but you're gonna have to be solid. Don't let the dog be off leash, please. If the dog is off leash and starts learning to jump and do all this stuff and gets that as a reward, you're never gonna fix it. So that's the mistake people usually always make. They go, oh, how do I teach the dog? The dog is jumping. Well, if the dog's not on a leash, how are you gonna correct it? So preemptive sit, stay, um, people coming back and forth. They don't look at the dog. They don't talk to the dog until the dog is calm. Dog learns that that's the behavior you want. Use some treats. Pretty, pretty simple. I'm glad you got that one out there. Um, John Mal says, I've uh, been creating training, uh, crate training. I spelled that wrong, by the way, John. My German Shepherd for four weeks now. She always does her potty outside. Awesome. When or how should I allow the dog to roam around the house without wanting to nip bite at everything? I'd like her to be free around the house like our cat is. Well, it's a whole different animal here, a cat and a dog. I hope you know that, John. Um, a, you want to start teaching the dog to be free in really structured, small interactions. So what we do with Dwayne is um, we put him on a little uh, drag line and we let him be loose in the house. And when he's nice and calm for a few minutes, we put him back in his crate or we take him for a walk or we do anything like that. It's, it's really about doing this in short, short, short durations and making sure the dog is calm and then putting him back. So on success, he's out for 5, 10, 15, 20, whatever minutes. He's on a tether. He's close to you. Don't just let him go willy-nilly around the, the house finding something to chew on and destroy. Keep the dog near you. Maybe do it when you're watching TV. Keep the dog sitting at your feet. If the dog moves, go, no, hey, over here, lie down on his bed or whatever that might be. And get the dog to understand that that's what you want. When he's calm, put him away. Always finish the exercise when the dog is succeeding. Don't, when the dog starts acting crazy, put him away. When the dog is acting crazy, correct him until he's acting right, then put him away. Teach the dog that the last thing he's done is the right thing, and then he'll come back out the next time with that behavior. That's really important. Um, I think I've got time for one or two more. Let's see here. I've got a, so many questions here. Um, okay, here, my name is Adil. I'm from London. I just bought a Rottweiler about 10 to 11 months old and he sits on one side. Is that something normal? So he has what's called a flop sit. Um, and that's something if you, maybe you watch my video on teaching the perfect sit. Um, you can fix it. You can kind of guide the dog's butt. Watch the video um, on the perfect sit. Um, guide the dog's butt underneath and in so the dog sits nice and strong and release the dog from there. Teach him that over and over again. I mean, if he's 10, 11 months old, you, you know, at one point you might want to get his hips checked to see if there's any problem with his hips or, or his knees. But um, I, don't, I don't think it's probably going to be a big deal. You can kind of do that real simply, just teaching him the proper sit over and over, over again. And keep it short because sometimes when the dog goes into that flop sit, he's been he's sitting comfortably and then he just kind of flops over onto the other side. And then, the, then you know, you release the dog from that flop sit, so he just goes into that kind of a sit. But super simple to fix. Um, the next one is somebody, I'm assuming in Russia, because you have really fancy uh, fonts and I don't know what they say, but um, can you give us advice how to stop puppy jumping on beds and couches when out of the crate? So I already addressed on the previous issue. You're gonna put the dog on a line, on a little uh, drag line, and put a little bed down on the floor for the, for the dog and teach the dog that, um, he's going to get rewarded for being on there. You're going to put some treats on there. You're going to put a bone on there. You're going to put a Kong on there. And when he jumps up on the bed or the couch, you give him a little tug and like a nope, 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 nope. And put him back on the, on the ground, on his bed where he should be. Um, just remember, don't use really firm corrections for that. You're not trying to be aversive to the dog. You're just trying to guide the dog to where he should be. So, um, that's why I kind of like the word nope as opposed to the word no. It's kind of hard. Not that I don't, I, I don't use no. I'm going to do a different video on that. But, um, yeah, just, just keep the dog on a tether, correct for bad behaviors, reward for proper behaviors. When the dog is down on the ground and, uh, and, and, and on, you know, on his bed, chewing a Kong toy or, or a, a, a bone or whatever, then uh, reward the dog for that. You know, that, that's a good boy, that's a good boy. And keep those interactions short because the dog is it's still a puppy, obviously. Not that hard, but uh, it's going to take staying on top of it. So I'm going to wrap that up for this 
edition of Canine Conversations. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm trying to keep these right around 10 minutes or so, so I don't bore you to tears, and so we can keep people engaged in all the videos and the dog training. So I hope you give your dog all the love, all the structure, and all the training your dog needs. Hope you have a great life with your dog, and um, I'll see you on the next edition. Thanks for tuning in. By the way, if you like this video, hit the subscribe button and give the video a thumbs up.